We're delighted to welcome you to the 14th Jaipur Literature Festival protected by Dettol. Today's session is presented with festival partner European Union. It's a pleasure to present today Misiles, the Bees, Mili's Free Dental in conversation with Malashri Lal. Mili's Free Dental's historical novel Misiles, the Bees is based in Estonia of the 17th century. Using a fabulous technique, the author explores philosophy and science as twin factors influencing the hero Laurentius who, accompanied by his uh, parrot Claudia, travels to Tartu. The Estonian city, famed as the abode of the muses, turns out to be a place of destitution and disease. While Laurentius submits to various treatments for his bodily and mental illnesses, he faints and begins to see an enchanting bee-like maiden in his hallucinatory condition. The novel melts the boundaries between history and speculation, creating a fascinating discussion on the perception of reality. In conversation with Mili's Fredental is academic and writer Malashri Lal. Lal's recent book is Betrayed by Hope, a play on the life of Michael Madhusudan Dutt. Mili Stridental is active in both academia and literature. Academically, his main research topic is intellectual history and the same interest is expressed in historical fiction, but also in speculative literature. He has published novels, short stories and plays. In 2013, he won the European Union Prize for Literature. Malushri Lal. Malushri recently retired from academic and administrative positions at the University of Delhi's English Department. She is a member of the English Advisory Board of the Sahitya Academy and Bharti Janan Peets Advisory Committee. Her books include In Search of Sita, Revisiting Mythology, Tagore and the Feminine, A Journey Through Translations, and Finding Radha, The Quest for Love. Please do remember to comment by typing it into the comment section on your screens. Ladies and gentlemen, Missy Lays, The Bees, Mili Street Dental in conversation with Malashri Lal. Enjoy the session. Hello, it's Hello. indeed a pleasure to open this discussion with you, Mr. Melius Frindenthal. And as an academic and a writer from Estonia, this very beautiful country in Northern Europe, I'd like to introduce our audience to the complex history of your country, if I may. It's a very ancient history as I read about it. The earliest records take us back to 9000 BC. The Crusades brought Christianity to Estonia in the 13th century. And after centuries of successive rule by Germans, Danes, Swedes, Poles, and Russians, a distinct Estonian identity began to emerge in the 19th and early 20th centuries. And then in 1987, the peaceful singing revolution began against the Soviet rule. And this, as I understand, resulted in the restoration of de facto independence for Estonia on 20th August of 1991. Uh, it is indeed important to keep this capsule history in mind and at the JLF platform today, because you in your novel allude to the richness of the narrative of Estonian history and your story is set against this background. The Bees is indeed a fascinating book and I enjoyed reading every page of it. Beautiful writing, wonderful imagery and such a magical quality about the narrative. This novel also won the 2013 European Union Prize for Literature. Many congratulations. Thank you. Mainly set in the city of Tartu in the 17th century when Estonia was a part of Sweden. This story is a rich blend of history, medieval science, and fabulous tales. So my first question, Willis, is that your academic career has been in the prestigious and ancient University of Tartu in Estonia, where you studied theology. And you held various positions there as a researcher in the library, and later as professor of intellectual history. How do these experiences relate to your novel, The Bees? Uh, thank you. Uh, first of all, uh, I'm really uh, happy that I can be here and we can just have this conversation. And of course, it's a bit sad that uh, I can't uh, be physically in Jaipur right now, which would be a wonderful experience. But uh, uh, as it, the situation is, we have to do uh, with what uh, means we have. So uh, to the question. Uh, I think that um, uh, uh, this uh, novel has a very uh, strong connection to my academic research. Uh, actually, uh, it is uh, uh, 
the academic research uh, uh, because of what this novel actually has uh, uh, taken form of. Uh, I was uh, writing about uh, this 17th century period and uh, uh, academically, and I felt that there is so much interesting uh, things happening there. And you can't write about these things only academically, because uh, when you write academically, you have to find all uh, 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 this kind of uh, 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 proofs and, and, uh, and you have to uh, say only what you can uh, uh, say based on historical uh, documents or, or, or resources. But uh, I felt that there is so much more there uh, we can discover, uh, and uh, literature actually helps to do that. So I just began to write the story, and uh, it was uh, also intellectually really interesting for me, because uh, uh, when I wrote the story, uh, it just led me through uh, the whole process, and uh, uh, in a way I, I wrote it uh, 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 so that I, I discovered, for me, also the period. Because, uh, as I said, I researched the period, I, and I thought that I know the period really well. But actually, as it comes out, uh, I uh, knew about mainly the academic life, but uh, there's also this everyday life, this everyday experiences that people have at that time. And this began to interest me. So I uh, started to explore that uh, and uh, it just opened up for me also a whole new world. So uh, the writing of that book was, was really this kind of uh, 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 this journey of discovery for me also. Well, it's been a wonderful journey of discovery for your readers also, if I may say that. So yeah. uh, let, let's talk about that wonderful protagonist that you have created. This is Laurentius Hylas. He's a medical scholar and he travels to Tartu in um, the hope of gaining intellectual excitement, stimulation. And accompanying Laurentius is that magical parrot, Claudia. And this parrot is his companion, his resource for comfort. But instead of finding excitement and intellectual stimulation in Tartu, what he finds instead is poverty and destitution and figures of death. Laurentius, as you just mentioned, is also a person who suffers from dismal melancholic condition of what's called the black bile. And he is constantly getting this terrible stench, this smell which is nauseous and stifling. The protagonist hopes that his studies will help him overcome this condition, in fact, give a clue to how other people may also overcome this terrible condition. And I'm quoting that beautiful line from your text, because if there is any cure for melancholy, it is an art and science. And towards the beginning of the novel, there are these amazing and detailed descriptions of the journey in a crowded stagecoach, hurtling down those medieval rutted roads. And then the sudden death of Laurentius' beloved parrot. He can't imagine life without the parrot. And that happens fairly early in the novel. Now, these sections or these aspects of the novel read like a parable of a quest, and yet it is embedded in history. So uh, what aspects of 17th century Estonia were you invoking in such descriptions? Uh, yeah, okay, there, there's a lot of uh, chances there, but uh, uh, when I, uh, I will just start about, uh, uh, with uh, uh, the medical uh, uh, questions that, uh, that you mentioned, and actually this kind of uh, uh, early modern medical uh, 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 theories uh, are uh, one of the things that really interest, uh, interested me. Uh, so I tried to uh, 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 show actually how uh, 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 the science of medicine would have worked at that time. And the parrot, the companion to Laurentians, uh, was in a way uh, 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 some kind of medicine. 
uh, because uh, uh, this parrot uh, function has this kind of uh, a balancing uh, uh, entity for his melancholy. And, uh, uh, and I, uh, I try to explore then uh, the question when this kind of uh, uh, balance uh, is uh, disturbed, what, what, what will happen? Uh, and uh, uh, when we move from that to the question of uh, the description of Estonia at that time, and also uh, uh, during this my research and uh, upon the period, uh, it uh, just struck me that uh, 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 there was poverty and hunger and and really uh, terrible this kind of uh, uh, situation uh, all around. But in the midst of that, university still functioned. And actually the university functioned uh, really well. And there were uh, uh, new uh, theories uh, taught there. Uh, Newton, for example, uh, Newton's uh, theory of uh, uh, gravity was discussed there. And there were other uh, philosophical theories that were really modern at that time. So uh, this kind of contrast between the university and uh, the uh, surrounding uh, uh, poverty and, and superstition. Uh, uh, this was something that, uh, that I tried to explore. And of course, this was uh, a real uh, uh, historical situation. And uh, it, it was, uh, I, I think, even more uh, sort of pronounced at that time because the university uh, was uh, for uh, upper classes. And, uh, and for upper classes, uh, they were uh, all Germans or, or, or Swedes at that time. So, and the Estonians uh, uh, didn't attend university at that period at all. So Estonians, uh, Estonian speaking population are the peasants who are in the margins always. So uh, this kind of contrast also uh, interested me between the, uh, this kind of uh, German and Latin speaking uh, 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 upper uh, uh, population class and, and, and the peasants. Uh, so uh, uh, I, I try to show that also a bit because in Estonian literature, uh, it has been so that, um, uh, of course, Estonian language uh, literature has been always more interested in Estonians, uh, the Estonian speaking uh, population, the peasants. So mostly uh, when we read Estonian historical fiction, uh, then uh, it, uh, uh, when it describes the earlier periods, it, uh, it focuses on the peasants. But uh, I try to uh, uh, have a look uh, at the whole situation, not from the perspective of the uh, peasants, but uh, from the perspective of the academics. Uh, of the university uh, and and this uh, protagonist Laurentius, uh, his background is uh, uh, purposely a bit vague, uh, mm -hmm. so uh, and uh, I don't want to give him any certain uh, place where he's from, uh, but I also hint that his background is not this kind of upper class background, but he's also from very poor and 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 uh, uh, problematic circumstances so that uh, he would have a different eye on the whole uh, situation, uh, how the peasants are, or the, how the local people are living. I was fascinated with the, the medicine uh, background that you bring into the novel, uh, particularly the theory of four humors, which uh, dominated the thinking then about the human body. Uh, the, the four humors being black bile, yellow bile, blood, and fell. It's uh, interesting that uh, in Indian texts of the Ayurveda, there is something similar, but there are five elements and said to constitute the human condition. Mm -hmm. And that's air, water, ether, fire, and earth. And as you mentioned with the medieval theory of humors, any imbalance in these elements or in the humors would bring about disorders such as the black, black bile that you talk about with reference to Laurentius's condition. So why was this medical contextualizing so important? Uh, particularly when actually the modern readers are looking at medieval history, but it seems there is a link that you want to build between the then and now. 
Uh, yes, uh, this uh, this is really uh, interesting uh, right now, I think, also, because uh, now we have this kind of COVID uh, situation, the pandemic, uh, and uh, uh, in a way, the, uh, uh, the themes that I wanted to explore have become even uh, maybe more pronounced uh, that, uh, than they were when I uh, wrote the novel. Uh, uh, so that uh, I, I really think that uh, the medical uh, uh, ideas of that time are maybe not as uh, strange uh, as they uh, uh, seem sometimes. So that uh, uh, when we consider uh, right now uh, the COVID situation, we, we, we know that quarantine is one of the uh, most uh, uh, useful methods of preventing the spread of disease. And quarantine is a medieval uh, uh, idea that was used during medieval times. So the ideas about diseases, uh, 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 when uh, uh, we look at them from the right angle, uh, we can find uh, very uh, 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 good insights there. Uh, and uh, and this, this was one of the things that uh, uh, interested me because th this idea of a disease is um, uh, so that uh, uh, at that time, of course, uh, they uh, uh, had to uh, find ways to cope with all those uh, 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 there was plague was uh, rampant at that time. There were uh, uh, many, many other diseases that they had no idea of how to deal with. So they uh, they uh, built did build uh, some kind of models, uh, and 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 sometimes these models see, uh, are really really uh, interesting. And I think that this kind of uh, folk humor uh, theory. Uh, uh, it, it's, it's really interesting that this is not only in Europe, but also in India and also in China. So uh, I, uh, uh, I'm teaching also a course uh, in university introduction to alchemy. Uh, and this, in this, this introduction to alchemy uh, course, uh, uh, we also touch upon uh, the alchemical ideas of all, uh, places all over the world. So we try to have this kind of global uh, 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 perspective on that. And it's, it's really interesting that uh, these ideas are indeed over and in very many ways similar. So uh, uh, the question is, when we look at diseases and, and when we look at uh, how, uh, uh, what kind of uh, ways there are to, to cure them, these seem to be, uh, there is some kind of universalist uh, idea there. And, and, and this, this was something that uh, did interest me and I tried to explore that also uh, in, in the novel. Well, talking of uh, universalist ideas and the outreach of your novel, I would love it for you to read something maybe from the beginning or wherever you like. It would be wonderful to hear the <laughs> context, the language. It's very beautifully translated. And uh, yes, I can imagine uh, that, the, that the original must be just as beautiful. Uh, yeah, uh, I, uh, of course, I will uh, right now read in English, uh, uh, and uh, uh, I, I think the English uh, translation is quite good, so it's, uh, uh, in, in a way, uh, I have uh, received quite good feedback about this uh, uh, translation, so uh, yeah, I, I hope it really does uh, convey the, uh, the original meaning, but I will uh, read from the very beginning, uh, and I think that uh, uh, we'll read some couple of minutes, so uh, uh, just uh, let me know when to stop. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, it had been raining without end. The rain had rotted the crops in the fields. It had caused mildew on the wooden walls of the houses and made the ship's decks as wet as seaweed. Laurentius had been eating rotten bread for several months now and living in mildewed houses. During the last week, he had been slipping on the wet decks too. Black bile had been uh, accumulated in him like the sludge which collects on a stick thrust into the river. Finally, he stepped from the rocking boat onto the harbor quay, onto the slippery boards, knocked onto poles rammed deep into silt and he looked unsurely at his surroundings. As gusts of wind from the low sky blew drops of water into his face, he tried to comprehend what kind of country 
this could be where he had come of his own free will. The bare strip of shore, with its white sand and lone bulrushes, and the uniform grey clouds closely resembled the harbour which he had set out from. Set against the backdrop of grey sky, the postal ship's masts looked just as before, and the sailcloth stretched across them was as grey and impassive as when he had started his journey. Alongside the wharf, which stretched far out into the sea, a breakwater could be seen, half submerged under the muddy water, and at the end of it an old watch house was stooping low into the water. Clearly, no one had used it for some time. So that's yeah, this, this is not the first page. Yeah. That's, that's an absolutely stunning opening section. And uh, the rest of the novel also, the language is absolutely beautiful. And I know a lot of the book reviewers have also praised the way the translation has happened. So let's get back to the narrative, uh, particularly to this uh, woman who's associated with the bees. So the parrot Claudia is dead. And then later on, when Laurentius is suffering in the dank and unhealthy air of Tartu, he comes upon this very pretty girl who's also called Claudia and seems as though she has inherited or been transformed into or been taken uh, and emerged from the parrot Claudia. Uh, there is, there is a, a strange kind of an equation between Laurentius and Claudia because unlike in medieval uh, paradigms, here it is the woman who rescues the man. And she seems to be the stronger entity and she rescues this, this rather uh, melancholic and desolate person. And now, Claudia is associated with honey and with bees. And that's reflected in the title of your book. But the book has also been translated with the title, The Willow King, who is a different kind of a shadowy figure. So I was wondering how you would like to explain Claudia in the book, The Bee Association, and then The Willow King uh, as the alternate title. Of course, uh, this, this is something that I uh, uh, think builds the main uh, uh, sort of nexus of ideas uh, in the novel. And uh, 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 these three uh, uh, entities are, are, are the ways that uh, you can uh, just look at that. Uh, 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 Claudia, uh, the bees and the Willow King are all uh, uh, sort of intersecting. And this intersection point is uh, 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 a human being, you can say. And uh, uh, there is uh, uh, the Willow King represents uh, this kind of uh, uh, superstition, uh, uh, fear uh, of death uh, and maybe death itself. Uh, uh, and uh, also uh, uh, when you put it into this 17th century um, uh, context, uh, it, uh, it also uh, takes up the uh, themes of uh, witchcraft and demons uh, that are associated with this. Uh, 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 the uh, uh, Claudia uh, and, and, and the bees are, uh, you can say, the opposite of that. So it's uh, something that uh, uh, through which it's possible to uh, escape from this uh, 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 shadowy uh, willow uh, king uh, world. So, and, and uh, 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 this is also the cure of melancholy. You can say that the melancholy uh, uh, is uh, uh, the willow king also, because uh, uh, when we just go uh, into the, the medical theories of that time, uh, there was um, uh, 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 the period when uh, witchcraft was uh, 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 you can say problematic, uh, and there were uh, many theories uh, why uh, uh, witches uh, thought uh, the way they did, and whether the witches actually were real or not, and, uh, and so on. And one of the theories was that uh, uh, witches uh, uh, only hallucinate what they uh, claim to see, and these hallucinations are caused by melancholy. 
So, uh, and uh, it means that witches are melancholiacs. Uh, so uh, the cure of melancholy would be also the cure of uh, uh, the disease of witchcraft. And, uh, 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 and the bees, bees are of course something that uh, is, uh, uh, has been from ancient times already very, uh, 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 has many symbolic meanings. Uh, and, uh, uh, but what interested me was uh, this uh, connection with bees uh, to uh, uh, human soul. Uh, and also uh, the connection of uh, the uh, uh, gold colored honey. Uh, as I said that there in the novel there are uh, many alchemical ideas and, uh, uh, and I, uh, uh, I wrote it also uh, uh, taking these uh, into account. So uh, in a way you can see that this is the process of uh, alchemical uh, perfection that they try to, uh, uh, the protagonist tries to achieve this kind of uh, opus magnum the, uh, the, uh, to go from the black uh, pile from uh, uh, the darkness into uh, the alchemical gold to uh, this kind of uh, uh, liberation from that. Uh, so uh, there are there are many themes that uh, that play along here. So uh, and uh, uh, I didn't want to just bring uh, uh, any of these uh, very clearly into foreground but to hint uh, to all these possibilities so that uh, uh, basically a reader can just uh, uh, build up uh, uh, the picture in her mind uh, herself. So, yeah. That's absolutely um, an amazing track that you have covered from alchemy, witchcraft to um, the cure for melancholy and uh, the way we look at it today. So uh, may I lead you to a larger question, which is to ask you about the very vibrant literary culture of Estonia. Uh, what makes the writers in your country so engaged with history and for readers to so willingly participate in literary forums? I've been reading back issues of journals coming out of Estonia, a lot of discussion there on very many platforms. And then obviously there seem to be translators who are not only very good, but very willing to pick up the good novels and reach them to larger audiences in English as well as other European languages. What creates this lively environment of literary culture? Um, I think that this, uh, 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 there are of course uh, many questions here again, but uh, when I, uh, would start with uh, 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 the importance of literature. And I think the, this is, uh, when you look at many uh, smaller nations, and Estonia is very small. Uh, so uh, the literature is uh, one of the main uh, uh, ways or main tools to uh, just uh, create this kind of national identity and to uh, 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 this uh, build up this national identity. So uh, uh, in this sense, literature has been really important historically. And, uh, and also as this kind of uh, uh, attitude uh, has uh, 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 resulted that uh, historical fiction has been uh, an important uh, way of doing that. And as uh, when I said previously that the Estonian historical novel has been mainly focused on Estonian peasants then and Estonians. So this is something maybe that's now a bit changing because now people are uh, more willing to engage with uh, uh, our past also from different uh, perspectives to see, see how, how the Swedes, the Swedes and, Danes and, 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 and Germans and, and, and Russians, and Russians uh, 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 lived here because uh, we have uh, lived with them together for uh, yeah, uh, several uh, hundred uh, uh, years. Uh, so it's, uh, it, it has been always this kind of uh, tension and, and, and literature is a wonderful way of exploring that. So uh, in this sense, literature has been really uh, 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 important.
important and everyone uh, in Estonia I think really uh, well understands that how uh, literature has formed our national identity and our understanding of Estonia and Estonian history. But uh, of course that doesn't mean that uh, uh, this kind of attitude would uh, uh, automatically translate to uh, contemporary lively uh, literary culture. And uh, this, this is something that I think uh, now uh, Estonian government has done a lot because uh, uh, there are uh, 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 sort of uh, uh, they are interested also that uh, literature would uh, thrive and they uh, very well are aware that if we would have to compete always uh, commercially uh, with uh, authors all around the world, then it would be very uh, uh, difficult uh, in a way, because when uh, we wrote only for a very small audience, like in Estonia it is, so the question is that when we compete with uh, uh, writers of uh, uh, all around the world, because translation is also something that's very... Uh, 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 we, we, we read uh, mostly in translation uh, books, so uh, uh, this kind of uh, uh, helping uh, to spread Estonian uh, uh, literature and helping uh, the writers to uh, uh, focus on writing has been something that in, in, in recent years has been really, uh, I, I, see, uh, I think, quite successful. So, uh, uh, and uh, uh, when I look at Estonian uh, literature, it's, uh, uh, it has become more interesting and, and uh, uh, there are more variety uh, in Estonian literature than it was, let's say, 20 years ago. So it's uh, something very, uh, uh, very interesting is happening. Yeah. Thank you. That's a lot of new information for me. And I'm very happy to know about the context in which the new literary culture is emerging. Um, as a novelist, um, you must be looking at all the book reviews that come out and particularly in relation to this novel, The Bees. I read several of the book reviews and um, there's an astonishing final chapter to this book. And there seems to be a certain kind of a debate and discussion going on in, among your readers and reviewers about um, the, the way the novel ends. Um, you know, that uh, thematically does it work or does it not work? Um, one doesn't want to give away the high points of a novel, but this is, it's a very philosophical novel, as you said, built on, on history, science, philosophy, and inner understanding. So there is no great mystery because it's a journey based on the 17th century, but as, as you and I have been discussing, it has a pertinence to modernity and modern thinking. So the way the novel ends, as a writer, are you happy with the discussion that's going on uh, and you look back, do you think you might have wanted to do it differently? Uh, I actually, actually, I'm very happy and it, it's exactly uh, the thing that maybe I even hoped for because uh, I uh, uh, thought that this ending uh, has to be uh, so open. Uh, and uh, this kind of openness is something that uh, is also, uh, uh, of course, every opening uh, creates this kind of discussion, how you can fill it and, and, and what ways you have to uh, uh, use to fill it. And uh, in, the, in this sense, I'm uh, uh, quite quite pleased uh, uh, with uh, the reception and with the discussion and uh, I wouldn't have uh, ended it any other way so uh, I don't have any second uh, thoughts about that and uh, 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 no it's uh, I, I, I think that this this uh, result is something that I uh, maybe even hoped for yeah uh, now you've raised everybody's curiosity would you mind reading a little bit from the last chapter uh, yeah, of course I can do that. Uh, I just have to uh, uh, find it here in the book because I have haven't got that uh, ready. It's it's a quite short one, yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, this is also something that the the whole book is uh, divided into uh, uh, into uh, chapters uh, of uh, six days. So this kind of six day symbolism is also uh, an important part there. So, and, and six days of creation are uh, somehow connected to that. So it's, uh, 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 and, and it's titled Night. Um, I can hear birds singing, leaves rustling, 
someone's footsteps and the barely audible sound of a musical instrument played somewhere in the distance. I push myself upright, resting my hands on the marble which has been warmed in the sunlight and I uh, turn to look in the direction of the sea. Where am I? The clay brown water seems to become blue on the horizon and the growing out of the dark haze I can see shimmering shore and the contours of mountains tinged red in the sunlight. I can smell the sweet scent of bright roses mixed with powerful uh, uh, woody aroma of food and I can hear bees coming. There are countless numbers of bees all around. I feel as uh, if I have just woken from a dream and I strive to hold on to that fragile feeling and the fleeting fragments of memories. I take uh, in the view of the sea, the trees, the garden. There is an apiarium down here, a row of beehives standing in straight row alongside a low wall. The wall, wall winds round the edge of a small plateau and appears to have been built with almost no growing. So, um, yeah, uh, it's, uh, uh, um, <laughs> it's of course connected with uh, bees. So, uh, yeah, and uh, uh, I'm, uh, as I said previously, I'm still very happy with that ending. So. I think it's a beautiful ending. So actually I didn't know what was, why there was any other kind of discussion about it. I thought it was the most perfect ending to the book. Mm -hmm. So uh, these days we hear so much, Milis, about uh, speculative fiction and what is also called science fiction. Uh, that was the older name. Now, most of these books are futuristic. Some are even intergalactic. Your second novel is cast like a dystopia. But when we come to this novel, which is your third, it seems to have elements of speculative fiction in it. Uh, but instead of being linked to the imaginary future, it goes into the past of a long and a deep civilization. And you're exploring transitions, which also speculative fiction does, seemingly in history, but more importantly, it's the journey of the mind. You're into the mind of this protagonist. Uh, you interrogate medieval uh, science, and also the tools of medieval thinking and the humors. Now, yet your eyes are really set on the modern reader of this book. So there is a dimension of an eternal quest that is built into the story of Laurentius and the elusive woman, I mean, that pair. So would you agree that, that you're making that, that bridge between the imagined past and the expectations of the contemporary reader in the same manner that speculative fiction also builds upon the possibilities that modern readers think about. Yeah, exactly. This is, uh, I think, very well put. And uh, 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 the, uh, it's true that uh, I have uh, written also speculative fiction and uh, I have used uh, these methods maybe of uh, speculative fiction in uh, writing historical fiction. And uh, to be honest, I think that uh, writing any uh, kind of uh, uh, writing about any kind of society or any kind of events that are uh, remote from our own uh, demands this kind of uh, speculative element uh, and and this speculation is something that uh, uh, always takes account uh, uh, how we are understanding things now the present is very important in this uh, kind of uh, speculation because i'm uh, always uh, when i'm I have written also in science fiction, I've always uh, thought about how we uh, view things today and uh, 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 how this today's view uh, can be transformed into, uh, uh, into a different world. So it's uh, uh, in a way speculative fiction is this kind of introduction uh, to a new world. And this introduction uh, has to be not very uh, uh, sudden, so uh, as introduction, uh, introductory courses go in university, you have to just uh, uh, take from the uh, basics and, and then lead uh, to, uh, to, the, uh, uh, to the new material and to the, uh, and exactly the same with, uh, when, when you go to a, a new world, you have to just sort of open up the world. 
uh, uh, and uh, uh, whether this is a, a historical world or, 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 or imagined future world is, uh, is uh, maybe technically only different. And I think that this is uh, something uh, uh, that uh, maybe lots of historical fiction uh, uh, is so that uh, they uh, uh, present uh, uh, the world, uh, uh, the, the events, but the mentality remains a lot uh, uh, as uh, is right now. So, and uh, one of the things that I try to do is to encapture the, this kind of uh, uh, strange and, and, and maybe alien mentality of the early modern period. Because uh, uh, it's very easy to just say that people thought exactly as we do, but they didn't. They had uh, quite different realities. This kind of uh, belief in, in, in ghosts and, and demons and angels was uh, commonplace. And uh, this, uh, uh, this also changed the whole world, the, the, the feeling of how it was to be in this world. So uh, uh, the, uh, this this was something that uh, that uh, uh, interested me and and, and what, I, what I tried to explore with these methods of speculative fiction. May I ask what you're writing now? What's the next book? Uh, uh, yes, I'm writing now a, a, a new novel. I actually finished. Uh, 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 a collection of uh, short stories, uh, and uh, uh, this this came out last year. And I was uh, I'm actually still very happy uh, that uh, this uh, this collection came out. But now I'm uh, writing a novel. It's uh, sort of uh, uh, it, it's it's not finished, <laughs> it's not, it's, <laughs> but uh, but it's uh, it explores uh, 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 it's it's in a way it's also historical, but it's uh, set in twenty uh, uh, century, and it, uh, uh, and it explores this kind of uh, uh, feeling of uh, 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 maybe nostalgia. Uh, and uh, uh, tries to uh, combine that with uh, 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 the questions uh, uh, of um, uh, death uh, again, in a way, but uh, uh, we look uh, from a different angle. Uh, uh, the, the question that uh, interests me is that people who have uh, emigrated from their uh, own country to somewhere else, uh, then they uh, have a certain view of their homeland and they just want to uh, somehow uh, uh, want to go back there, uh, but actually do not want to do that. These are this kind of uh, strange, uh, conflicted uh, feelings. And they uh, develop this kind of uh, 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 contact with uh, people who live there at that time when they were there but now are already dead, but they don't uh, uh, see these people as dead, but uh, as living. Uh, uh, and th this is something that, uh, uh, that I'm just trying to explore with this, this book. Well, um, thank you for sharing your present work and a great joy for me to be able to speak to you and to understand the novel from the writer's point of view. Thank you very much. Wishing you all the best and looking forward to your further books. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. I was very happy to just have this talk with you. Thank you. Thank you, Milis Fridental and Malashri Lal for that intriguing conversation. And thank you for being part of Jaipur Literature Festival 2021. We would like to thank our celebration partner, Tiagio. And thank you all for watching and being such a great audience. Please stay logged on to continue to watch with us the series of exciting sessions featuring a stellar list of speakers that have been specially curated for you. As you're aware, the cultural sector has been critically impacted by the pandemic and while we have braced ourselves to embrace the new normal, we have struggled to ensure that we can continue to bring you a free flow of knowledge and ideas. We'd love for you to support us at Timbukas. Any contribution is welcome and would help spread knowledge and ideas seamlessly against all odds. You can also tweet using hashtag Festival 2021 at the red JepoLitFest. Remember, the festival is protected by Detol. Hope to see you next time. Thank you.